Hello, this is a video response to uh, something that I've just seen on YouTube now. I realise I'm probably a bit behind the times, but um, <laughs> recently on British TV we saw a documentary made by the Radio 1 DJ Scott Mills um, about uh, the world's worst place to be gay. And he went to Uganda um, where some of the most appalling violence and living conditions are suffered by gay people in Uganda. A lot of the prejudice uh, comes about from uh, the uh, religious um, authorities over there and uh, also from the government which constantly quotes the Bible as um, being, you know, this thing that we ought to bash people with who are gay or whatever, uh, LGBT as it were. Um, I really think that the argument is not being made for the Christians in um, our society that actually don't believe in homophobia. Uh, we do live in a democracy, therefore it is um, permissible for people to be anti-homosexual uh, in terms of not necessarily believing that it's right, um, but to be anti-homophobia, okay, um, I'll make my position clear right away. Um, I have no objection at all to homosexuality, however, I am also a person of faith um, and therefore um, I don't believe that these so-called Christians in Uganda are doing me justice at all uh, for the person that I am. Um, and also, I don't believe that the church is doing itself any favours by not actually coming out bravely enough to make um, its anti-homophobia position um, clear with respect to Uganda. Because although, and I'll read you a few statements in a minute, although um, the church is not homophobic, um, certain of its members are um, and really it ought to be stamped down but also um, the the Archbishop of Canterbury who is the head of the Anglican Church um, and therefore um, head of the Anglican Church in Africa um, he has a very hard job to do um, it's not just based on um, the the homosexuality thing um, he is defender of the faith and therefore he cannot really speak out um, as much as he could when he wasn't Archbishop of Canterbury. Um, he does condemn homophobia, he condemned the murder of David Cato, um, but his biggest job is really to try and um, sort of hold together the Church of England which uh, for the last at least 10 years now um, has been under the threat of schism which for um, church leaders is possibly like one of the worst things that could ever possibly happen to the church and is probably more of a sin than I don't know um, I don't know but um, but yes so um, he he is trying to be diplomatic but also to try and make his views abundantly clear but you have to do a bit of reading between the lines which I suppose makes him a bit of a chicken but anyway I'll just read to you from uh, just a couple of documents here that um, that actually sort of make the church's position abundantly clear okay um, the first one um, I found this on a website called Thinking Anglicans um, <clears throat> and uh, it talks about the uh, the murder of David Cato, as, as I said earlier, he was the guy that you saw in the Scott Mills um, uh, documentary. Um, he uh, protested against the death penalty legislation. He protested against the newspaper that printed faces of known homosexuals in Uganda. Um, called the Rolling Stone, and thank goodness the, the proper music Rolling Stone magazine has um, 
decided to disown itself from any other newspaper calling itself the Rolling Stone and being hateful. But anyway, um, I'm getting off the point. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is this comes from the 28th of January 2011. I'm not aware of any other statements that he's made about it. Um, so the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Rowan Williams, who is currently in Dublin for the Primates meeting, has made the following statement regarding the murder of the gay human rights activist David Kato Kisuli in Uganda. The brutal murder of David Kato Kisuli, a gay human rights activist, is profoundly shocking. Our prayers and deep sympathy go out for his family and friends and for all who live in fear of their lives. Whatever the precise circumstances of his death, which have yet to be determined, we know that David Kato Kisuli lived under the threat of violence and death. No one should have to live in such fear because of the bigotry of others. Such violence has been consistently condemned by the Anglican Communion worldwide. This event makes it all the more urgent for the British government to secure the safety of LGBT asylum seekers in the UK. This is a moment to take very serious stock and to address those attitudes of mind which endanger the lives of men and women belonging to sexual minorities. So you'd have to do a bit of reading between the lines. He's not actually pointing his finger and, you know, out and out naming um, the... Um, the government of Uganda and the, the church in Uganda for being responsible for these problems. But he is saying that those need to be challenged. Um, and hopefully um, people in Uganda, maybe if there is, you know, the, a, a tiniest slim chance that anybody gay in Uganda is watching this video, um, hopefully you can take heart from the fact that really and truthfully the churches over here do not approve of what happened uh, and what is happening in Uganda. So, um, you know, just keep, keep fighting really. Um, in terms of homosexuality itself, um, yes, there are a lot of people in, in the church who don't believe that it's scripturally compatible to be gay and Christian, but there are um, a lot of people, regardless of sexuality, within the church who do. Um, and, um, you know, um, so I just wanted to really um, share uh, some of the other stuff. This is this, some of this stuff's a bit old, dates back to the early two thousands. But even so, um, I'm not aware that um, any of this stuff has been sort of overtaken or changed or whatever. Um, uh, and some of what he says comes from the the key church document, um, which is issues in human sexuality. Um, so anyway, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury himself, at a number of points in recent years, has particularly focused on the issue of the church's attitude to homosexual people and the reality of homophobia. In his statement on the withdrawal of Geoffrey John, he was a gay, um, uh, a, a gay priest. Um, he, uh, he was nominated as a bishop. Um, he himself um, withdrew his nomination for a bishop. Um, but he said, um, let me add that some of the opposition expressed to Canon John's appointment has been very unsavoury indeed. A number of letters I received displayed a shocking level of ignorance and hatred towards homosexual people. Our official policies and resolutions as Anglicans commit us to listening to the experience of homosexuals and recognising that they are full and welcome members of the church loved by God. Not everyone, it seems, takes equally seriously this element in the teaching of the Anglican church. And some letters that came from non-believers suggest that the level of foolish and hurtful prejudice in our society is still uncomfortably high. Christians who collude with this are simply not living out their calling. Um, following the publication of the Windsor Report in his discussion of the need for repentance in his Advent Pastoral Letter to Primates of 2004, he included the following words, referring to yet another homophobic murder in London. And we should not forget those questions that may make us most uncomfortable. In the heat of this controversy, things have been said about homosexual people that have made many of them, including those who lead celibate lives, feel that there is no good news for them in the church. Remember that in many countries, such people face real persecution and cruelty. Even where there are no legal penalties, they suffer from a sense of rejection. Young people are driven to suicide by the conviction that no one will listen to them patiently. Many feel that they are condemned not for their behaviour, but for their nature. Um, there's a lot in that documentary, by the way, about um, uh, the um, anti 
anti-gay brigade all saying that you're not born gay. Well, he is there saying that is their nature. They are born gay. Um, as I write these words, I have in mind the recent brutal and unprovoked murder of a homosexual man in London by a group of violent and ignorant youths. The 1998 Lambeth Resolution on this subject declared plainly that the Anglican Church worldwide did not believe, because of its reading of scripture, that it was free to say that homosexual practice could be blessed. But it also declared that violence in word and or deed and prejudice against homosexual people were unacceptable and sinful behaviour for Christians. Earlier Lambeth resolutions have made the same point. Any words that could make it easier for someone to attack or abuse a homosexual person are words of which we must repent. We are bound to ask with the greatest care how we best communicate the challenge of the gospel to homosexual persons and how we may free ourselves from unreasoning fear or even hatred. Um, but I just wanted to really um, share those things with you just to show my solidarity to those people in Uganda and in other countries that feel persecuted because of their sexuality. It's not on and stop it people. Bye.